Hello and welcome to this session in our series of videos on how to critically appraise a randomised controlled trial following the CASP checklist. In this session, we'll answer question two, was the assignment of participants to interventions randomised? Well, the title of this paper says it's a randomised trial, so that's a good indicator. But let's look at the first two consideration points of this question. How was the randomization carried out? Was the method appropriate? And was randomization sufficient to eliminate systematic bias? So participants in a trial get randomized in order to prevent selection bias, where patients with better outlooks get selected for an intervention group to make that intervention seem more effective. The authors of a paper should always report how participants are randomized in their study design or methodology section. And this is reported in our study in the materials and methods section on page 810. And they write, after screening, eligible patients were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to receive dilexetine or placebo with an interactive web response system and stochastic minimization method using the baseline brief pain inventory pain severity average pain as an allocation factor. So what does that paragraph mean? Well, the one-to-one -one tells us the ratio of people in each group. So for every person that got assigned to the study group, a person was assigned to the placebo group to ensure there were roughly even numbers. In other studies, the ratio might be different. If a study's authors anticipate a very small effect would be observed, they may recruit more people to the intervention arm, say at a two to one ratio, so that the effect is detected. The interactive web response system mentioned here is the software that the authors use to randomize participants. And the stochastic minimization method is a type of stratification. But what is stratification? A study might stratify its randomization by factors like the age of participants to ensure that there's an even split of old and young between the groups. Or it might stratify by sex as pictured here to ensure that there's an even mix of men and women in each group so that any results observed can't be put down to there being more men than women in a group, for example. It's a way of ensuring that any potentially confounding factors are evenly distributed across the groups, so that any observed effect can be attributed to the intervention rather than those confounding factors. We've more on this in our video for question five. Some studies may randomize patients into permuted blocks as pictured, to prevent participants naturally pooling into one group or another as they're recruited, or to further conceal the allocation of participants in unblinded trials so that bias can creep in. There's more on permuted blocks at the Our Data Generation website uh, available via the URL pictured. In our study though, the authors used Strata to ensure there was an equal amount of people with similar baseline BPI scores across the groups and to ensure that one group didn't end up with all the worst suffering patients by chance. This is a common and appropriate practice, so we can answer yes to the first two consideration points. The final consideration point asks, was the allocation sequence concealed from investigators and participants? This information is present on page 810. The trial is double blind the allocation sequence was concealed from investigators and participants, and the drug and the placebo look the same. So we can answer yes to this consideration point, and we can answer yes to question two. Thank you. We hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions about this training, if you need further assistance with critical appraisal, if you would like more video tutorials on how to critically appraise a different type of study or on other topics, please email bartshealth.library at nhs.net.